David Carter is a state representative from Cabot in his third term in the Arkansas legislature. He's also a banker and a lawyer. Less than three weeks ago, he was elected to be the incoming Speaker of the House in the 89th General Assembly, which begins in January. Carter will be the first Republican to hold that seat since Reconstruction. Davy Carter, thanks for being here. Thanks, Roby. Glad to be here. Uh, what's been happening since your election? Has it been a little bit of a whirlwind? Uh, I understand you had some orientation this week. Are you tired? I'm a little tired, but we had a great week at orientation. It was really nice to bring all the new members in and get to know them. And a great group of, of, new, of new members. There's 40 new uh, members to the you know, Arkansas House, and you know that's a, a whole story in itself. But it's just a great, uh, great group of diverse people, and uh, we had a really, really good week this week. Forty out of a hundred. That presents a little bit of a governing and a leadership challenge there, because I'm. I got a feeling you're not on a first name basis with every one of them. If I were to hold up pictures right now, you think you could identify all forty of the new ones? I would do better than you than you, <laughs> you would think. Uh, but you know that that is that is key, and that's what you know. Frankly, I told the the, the group this week. You know, beyond all of the policy things we talk about and you know where the restrooms are and how to file bills the number one thing you know that you that I told the members they needed to do was get to know each other you know go out uh, you know have lunch you know talk you get to know their background and, and form those relationships because it is all about the relationships in the, in the General Assembly and a lot of that relationship too because you and I've talked about this we were on a panel on uh, Friday morning even talking a little bit about this those personal relationships where you learn where people have their strengths and that's some stuff you have to draw on for your real life experiences when this legislation starts hitting in the great magnitude that it does is that correct absolutely you know just like home church work uh, everybody's got their strengths in, in an organization and you know recognizing you know what people's uh, interests are what their abilities are and 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 and, and homing in to you know, to those strengths and putting a team together and and, and moving forward uh, to you know through the session is is really what what I view my frankly my role to be uh, as as speaker. So it, it's it's all about finding everybody's role where they can be successful. Tell me a little bit about what your leadership style is going to be like. Some people and I've seen some speakers before they've kind of ruled with a little bit more of an iron fist. I'm in charge. Uh, I've seen others that have been a little bit more delegators and. How are you going to kind of um, how are you going to roll with the punches up there? A good question. You know, my my personality is that you know I, I take off, I run, uh, and then I, I, I told I told the group this week, you know, I'm going to tell you where we're going and and where we're going to try to go, but it's up to you. It's up to you to you know come along and and, and grab me and, and 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 let's talk about some of your, your some of their goals. But you know, my leadership style is really one more by by example uh, in many ways. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not. I'm not one that uh, I'm not an iron fist guy, uh, but I, I'm out on, on the front, you know, pushing hard. I mean, you'll probably think that I'm an, uh, you know, juiced up on Mountain Dew every day during the <laughs> session, but I will be, you know, running hard, and, and we have to. We have a short window of time to get, the, you know, get the work done, you know, in, in, in the session, and we're going to do it. And we're going to push hard, and uh, hopefully, we do some good things. Does the the slim margins, the 51 percent Republican majority to the 48 Democrats, one Green Party nominee, does that make it a little bit more difficult in terms uh, for you to to be able to govern the way that you want to do this, to run this house the way you want to? I think you know maybe, but you know we have a a, a wonderful chance in Arkansas. I mean, to to be an example to the rest of the country on. On, on governing, and particularly with what's happened, uh, the political environment over the past couple of years nationally, and then we're presented with this scenario where you know we're a tripartisan you know body where you know we you're right, 51 Republicans, one Green Party, and, and, and 48 Democrats, but you know we're going to come together, we're going to come together and work together, and I really do think, I really think that we can be an example uh, that that people from other states. You will look to and say, you know what, these these men and women in Arkansas can can come together and govern, and and, and the, I think the people of Arkansas will be proud that we we set that example. I'm going to ask you about that it's about midway through the session. Yeah. We'll see if you still feel that way, and then afterwards yeah. we'll see too. Let's talk about some of the big issues this session. Obviously, Medicaid is probably going to be priority number one. We've got a budget gap right now in the current Medicaid system. Uh, we're talking about potential Medicaid expansion. How do you see the Medicaid debate playing out at this juncture? Do you see a, a way to solve this problem? 
Medicaid is by far the number one uh, issue that we're facing. It is a very difficult uh, issue. I do not know the answers. I don't think anybody in the body uh, you know, will tell you that they know the answers, you know, how to solve that problem. But it is fundamentally the most important complex thing that we're going to deal with this session. And I would submit perhaps even beyond the session. You know, I, I think we, we need to take a deep breath. Uh, let's gather the facts that, that, we, you know, that we're dealing with, understand the rules you know, on which we're being asked to make these long-term policy decisions for, you know, for the people of Arkansas. And so it, it, will, drive, it will drive the debate uh, not only you know, the, the, inherently about Medicaid and how we resolve the, the problem, but you know, tangentially, t yeah, I think it, is, it, will, it will drive debate on, on tax policy and, and budgeting. Uh, because of the enormous amount of money that we spend, and, and the, and the, frankly, the, you know, the big shortfall that we're facing right now. Do you see people as very boxed in in their positions right now on Medicaid, Republicans and Democrats, or do you think that there's a pretty big open-mindedness, generally speaking, about the the members of the House that you've spent this last week with? Uh, good question. I think I think the most common thread is that you know people are members are a little bit frustrated. Uh, the way, you know, I hate to say frustrated, but you know, the, a common common theme is we, we don't know, you know, what what the rules are going to be. You know, how much is you know expansion? What, you know, what are these things going to cost? You know, what what what's the what can we do? What can't we do? And we are waiting on you know rules to be promulgated from from Washington and sit down, and sent down to us. So I think from to the extent that members may be, you know, quote boxed in unquote, uh, it, I think it. If that's the case, it's probably more of a result of, you know, not knowing uh, what, you know, what hand we, we have to play or, you know, what rules we're playing by. So, Copays, uh, drug testing, do you think that those are on the table? Do you think those things will pass in terms of Medicaid reform to basically kind of help offset what might be a, a required vote for some uh, more expansion? Maybe. You know, there's been some talk of that. I think when we get down to the you know, to the to the to the the heart of the matter that you know copays and uh, you know drug testing aren't going to solve the you know the 350 million dollar you know, shortfall that we have you know and that's that, that that's a bigger issue than that so I don't want the debate to be about things like that you know I, we have to fundamentally get in and figure out why we why why are we where we are particularly before, you know, so before we go out and add, you know, you know increase the, the enrollment. So I think it's bigger than that. I'm not saying it won't, those two things won't be a part of it, uh, but, you know, we'll see. I just think it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of focus, and there are a lot of members that are, that have their eye on the ball and, and are trying to figure this problem out. we got about a minute left here. Okay. Quick question for you. Governor's proposed a grocery tax cut. Um, in the past, we've seen capital gains tax cuts or elimination come from the legislature you want to do some income tax reform. What's going to win out in those in that debate? Yeah, good question. Uh, I don't know. Look, we all want to cut taxes. Uh, I think that the common, you know, we, you know, we need to first agree on how much you know, we can do responsibly, uh, go through the budget process, let's look at the forecast, see how much money we, you know, we're talking about, and then we'll have that debate. You know, I think those are all, you know, the groceries are high. Uh, I understand that, but, you know, we also have to look at, 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 at the worker and, and, and let's look and see how we can make our tax income tax code a little bit you know maybe a little bit more fair and, and reasonable so capital gains tax does uh, it you know, to be determined to be determined all right he's representative <laughs> davy carter he's the incoming speaker of the arkansas house of representatives as always thanks for visiting with us thank you all right